Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This report is the end of day video for Friday, April the 29th, 2016. This is ticker symbol TVIX, TVIX, which is your inverse uh, trade. This is the one you want to buy. You buy this, uh, this stock if you believe the market's going down. Thus, volatility is increasing. Um, its counterpart, XIV, you want to buy when the market's in a bull market and going up. TVIX, if you recall, I said the other day that uh, this is definitely one that you want to take advantage of. This stock came into play yesterday, uh, late in the day, in the afternoon, um, around, I want to say, what was it, uh, $3 and... 51 cents yeah three dollars and 51 cents this uh this this got in play and it really took off and that's what what uh what was pretty exciting about this one it really took off and um we were down in here obviously and the market just just took off and we were able to ride this thing uh for for a good piece of change so we got in at 351 got out at uh what was that um 395 i believe it was 392 something like that so you know a good good 40 50 cent trade there you know um uh, so <clears throat> we look for things like that sometimes it's not necessarily something that's going to be uh on the sheet per se but it may come up later and so it's important sometimes you know trades come late in the week uh, you, you may not have anything going on or just grinding and then all of a sudden Thursday rolls around or Wednesday's closed and then all of a sudden a trade goes off I've even had trades go off on a Friday Friday morning you wait all week for something to happen and then Friday comes and uh, the markets moving and you, you get something and then you ride the momentum with that so it, it can be that way I, you know it's been it's been a rough week in regards to that from Monday to Wednesday for the most part we had nothing going on but just chop you know just just volatility and chop chopping you to pieces and it's been like that for the past two weeks markets have just been going sideways and then finally we we, we get a break breaking out of those trading ranges and that's what we're gonna look at right now so TVIX was a good play I just wanted to show you this one um, this was an outstanding play late in the week. Uh, overall, though, uh, as a rule, unless otherwise noted, I like to go flat on Fridays. I like to liquidate all positions on a Friday and walk away. Uh, unless there's something, you know, really big going on, then I may want to uh, put some insurance on. Like, for instance, I may hold um like if we're in a in a, in a terrible uh bear market or something i might put long tickets on going into the weekend in case the markets you know reverse and, and rally sharply um going into sunday night whatever and vice versa so sometimes i do that it just depends on how much i have in the position if it's a long term thing i've just been riding then i might i might do that but normally i like to go flat on Fridays I like to get in the market Sunday night Monday morning at the latest and ride it all week and get out Friday that's usually the way I like to do it so from a weekly perspective this market is still it's still weak it's still you know in the downtrend we did not uh, power up like I like I was hoping we didn't take out um, you know major movement here um, on the weekly chart the momentum breakout is at eight dollars and fifty nine cents we didn't do that this week uh, we only got up as high as four dollars and fifteen cents so barring some major event or you know terrible movement on Sunday night this could gap up on Monday um, I'm expecting a possible black Monday um, that that's still on the table that has not changed and we'll get into that why I still believe that and right now all right, let's go and take a look at the Nikkei. This right here should show you why I still believe 
that Black Monday is upon us. Look at this. We sold off even more today after selling off 1,300 points yesterday. We collapsed even further today. Finally selling down another 395 points. The Nikkei is just being demolished. Look at this. This super bearish engulfing candle here. We swallowed up last week's movement and almost a week prior. We almost took out this low right here. So this low is in play for the Nikkei coming into next week. Uh, the 15,565 is definitely in play. Strong support for next week is going to be at 14,935. And the way this thing moved, we could crash right through this with no problem whatsoever. Not looking good right now for the Asian markets based on this Nikkei movement. It's just not looking good here. This has to this ripple effect has to come over come over the, the over the, the pond. It has to. And you'd be foolish not to think that this is gonna affect us some kind of way. Um, now we do have the PPT which has been powerful. They've been operating in markets for the last couple of weeks, but something is changing and this is why I'm calling for Black Monday. Take a look at this. This here is the US dollar. Alright, now we know the Fed has been has been afraid, all right, and they've been operating trying to keep things together, but they're losing control. They no longer could save this dollar. This dollar took out the supports I warned you about the beginning of this week and even last week. I warned you about these supports, and these supports have been take, are coming out. I told you that 92 was in play in the dollar, and look at it. It, had, it, it, it hit and broke into 92 today. Uh, the low in the dollar uh, on, the, uh, on the June contract was 92.97.5. and a half. We broke into the 92 handle just like I told you that we was going to do. These are dangerous times. Anyone who is walking around blind with, without their eyes open, but open your eyes. The price action is telling you something. Something is dangerously wrong. All right. We're we're having a currency war, and I think we're going to have a currency flash crash or some type type of currency event in the near future. The dollar is telling you that. It's screaming to you right now. It's saying, "Look at me. I'm sick. Something is wrong. Something's hurting." It collapsed outside of the Kumo cloud. We are we are we have closed outside of the Kumo cloud. This is a weekly chart, and we are outside of the Kumo cloud. We're done. We're outside. We are bearish. Bear market done. The only thing we're waiting for now for you people who like to sit on the sidelines say I like to wait for confirmations and for this moving average to cross that one and for this stochastic to do this and all that. You 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 missing out on major price action. Look at all this from the drop back here. You missing out on all of this. All right. Here's what's going to take place now as momentum is accelerating to the downside on this thing. This is this line is going to cross this orange one. The short term is going to cross the long term, and they're going to they're going to trade below this Kumo cloud, and it's going to add more pressure as this thing accelerates. Once it hits 92, it's because it's a quick drop to 90, and then I'm telling you that 88. Once this thing hits 88. That's the emergency critical on level in this dollar. There's a there's a um, there's a range a ten cent range from 88 to 77. It's like a magic air pocket where the the price is like to settle. They can settle and trade between that for months. But I'm here to tell you if that 77 ever breaks, you mark my words, they will shut the banks down so fast. They will have to do something, false flag, blow something up, bomb something, blame something on on somebody, say ISIS did it or whatever, to stop that. That's the only way they could stop that. If this thing breaks 77, it is it is all heck breaking loose. You need to know that. You need to prepare yourself and know what's coming. If this is any sign of things to come, this bar was telling you something like this one did. This one right here told you and warned you that this market was in trouble. And that was many points ago, back at 98.43 handle. Boom, here it is. A lot to think about here. 
Yeah, it chopped up uh, up in it. It didn't just go straight down. Markets normally don't just go straight down. There's chop in there. A lot of chop. Here, it made you think it was recovering, then took in a new low. Here, closed up, made you think that the bottom was in, then boom, put in a new low. Here, try to recover a little bit, made you think the bottom was in, boom, put in a new low and reversed. Then who? Then we continue here next week. It's settled up. Made you think the low was in. Then boom, here we are this week. So it's it's been it's been tough. It's been a tough one. I, I'll admit that. But sticking with currencies, what else is going on with currencies? Check this out. This here is the gold chart. Now, what have have I been telling you all along? Strong support now is starting to lift up. Strong support for next week now is at 1212. That's right. That 1200 floor that I told you about is strengthening and it's starting to lift up the market. Look at this enormous rally. We finally closed above the 1289.70 that we talked about. Let's give a big hand, warm hand of applause for the pulse waves calling this market. Yay, pulse waves. The pulse scan swing VIX system kicked butt. It, it was late. It was a rough time. We got chopped up all up in here for weeks. We've been getting chopped up. Been getting chopped up since uh, February the 8th. Chop, 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 chopped up in here. All just in the washing machine cycle that seemed like it never ended. And just when you're ready to throw in the towel, boom, look at that explosion humongous move in the metals gold is telling you something it's finally broken out of this this long extended trading range this trading range that is that has lasted for months finally broke out and look at it off to the races now this is phenomenal price movement this is telling you that the old 1200 support is about to get lifted and new support is going to be 1300 that is where we're going 1300 so to let you know we're going to top out in the next move just so you can get an idea of, of where we were where we are you're looking at about I want to say 1350 ish is going to be the top side of the next leg up 1350 and then the floor will be 1300 so that's what you can expect uh, going into this next move. So be ready for that. Um, yeah. And we may even, depending on what kind of a velocity we get, it could be a $100 range. It could be, we could get as high as 1400 with the 1300 floor. So just keep a lookout. But definitely 1300 floor, 1350 ish could top out. May even get up there to as high as 14 I want to say 1389. So between 1350, 1390 should be the next top. Because <clears throat> this is moving in an orderly fashion. But if things get out of hand, then hey, 1900, here we come again. And gold can boogie. So we've seen gold move $100 in a day. We've seen that happen on multiple occasions. So keep your keep your heads up on this one. All right, so now let's take a look at silver because the video is getting kind of long and there's a lot of information I want to go over. So I may have to make more than one video. All right, here is the silver, and you can see silver also. Strong bids going into the close. Great upside momentum on these. Absolutely marvelous price action. You can't ask for anything better than that. This is exactly what we wanted to see in this market. As far as upside resistance, uh, we touched $18 today. <laughs> I do remember someone telling you that that was going to happen back when we were down here. I told you what the price projections were, and we did it. So let's give another big round of applause for the Pulse Scan Swing VIX. <laughs> Weekly Pulse Wave triggers have been on point, of course. We got chopped to death over the last couple of weeks here, as you can see all up in here. Uh, running up and running down but when you hang in there look what happens explosive move nice run in that metal this week all right now let's look at crude oil crude oil is 
It tried to touch the bottom of the Kumo cloud and just fell short of it. If it could have just got a little bit higher, hit the 48 handle, then we would have been all right. But it, 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 it ran out of steam. Uh, we went as high as 46.80. So that was a pretty good run for this market. Been that it, it moved from 43.72 down to 42.5 and, and rallied from 42.5 all the way up to 46.80. Monstrous movement uh, and volatility in this, in this oil. Uh, the report came out saying that there was more of a stockpile than they thought and so they were, and they specifically said on the the talking heads this is bearish uh for oil and the oil shrugged it off i think it only moved down like maybe 25 cents or something like that and then it just took off like a rocket it was like i don't understand this i don't understand why why, why is oil doing this and just like i said prices go where they want to go and look at the increased volume here this is telling you that the bottom was in back here, all right? And then once we broke this resistance, it was off to the races. It's it, short term, it's formed a bullish pattern here. This is a bull pattern right here. Momentum has crossed above the short term period moving average and is on its way to crossing above the next one. It's a big deal. It's kind of a big deal, folks. It's kind of a big deal. All right? You cannot ignore when you have a pattern like this. You cannot ignore that. The question is now is, is it going to bump its head and break its neck and collapse from here? Or is it going to have enough power to push through the bottom of the Kumo cloud and get up to 60? So there is there is the power... There, there are long positions in here building up that I think is going to push it to 60. I think that's the ultimate price target uh, is 60. We'll wait and see. Long way to go before you can call that. But going into next week, we still got strong support at the $31 handle, which is a long way away from where it's at. So pullbacks will most likely be bid up in this market going forward. All right, looking now at the Dow Jones, as you can see, not quite the bearish engulfing candles we had on the Nikkei. Uh, PPT came in at the end of the day and saved the day. This market was well on its way to having a, a, an incredible uh, downward spiral, but they came in and saved it. Didn't get to the 17.5. Did not get to the 17.5. Had it got to 17.5, that would have been all she wrote. It did get down to 17.568. So it was 68 points away from total destruction I mean I just want you guys to know how close we were today to total uh, destruction in this Dow they knew that 17.5 was an intraday support zone where the machines were gonna turn on and crush this market they stopped it short 68 points just in time to pump this thing back up and they could barely do that but even still they managed to live one more day that's why I'm saying Black Monday is coming look at this that's all they could do that's as much as they could do yeah this this stock market's in trouble serious trouble look at the Nasdaq if you don't believe that look at the Nasdaq you cannot have one index being demolished while the other ones are going up, 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 up. You know what that means and how that happens. You know the end result of dissing the NASDAQ. You cannot diss the stepchild. The NASDAQ is the stepchild. All right? You can't diss it. They did that before. They dissed it for one year, starting in 07. From 07 until... I want to say July, August of 08, the NASDAQ was not rallying with the S&P and the Dow. It was telling you that something was wrong, but no one would hear it. They said, oh, these are new contract highs. But they were ignoring the tech sector. You cannot ignore the NASDAQ. Well, it's happening again. 
The Dow and S&P fell, but not as hard as this bearish engulfing candle in the NASDAQ. This NASDAQ is, it looks like what? It looks like the Nikkei. The NASDAQ chart is identical to the Nikkei. It's dropping before, uh, before the long-term um, support. It's now bearish. It's be it, it, it closed below it, all right? The support is at 43.54. We closed at 43.35. I'm sorry, that is bearish. And look at the lines losing momentum and about to cross below the orange. You have strong support next week at 41.57, which is a long way to go. But I'm telling you, we'll probably at least test that going into next week. Black Monday is in full effect. The NASDAQ is telling you that right now. Unless the, the PPT can come in and at the same time have Janet Yellen start dumping money out of the helicopter, this is not good. Black Monday is in full, full effect. Take a look at this too. These big giant companies with ginormous market caps. Look at this Apple. I told you Apple was going into the 92 handle and we went to 92.51. We broke all kinds of supports and look what we closed. We Does this look familiar to you? We were at uh, 93.74 and here we were 94.02 and here we were 93.99. This is lower closed than the, than the last drop floor which means that this floor technically has been violated taken out and we don't have another floor I wish I had something to tell you but I don't if you're long an apple you are now in free fall and 80 is in play $80 is in play now in apple uh, we're gonna have to watch this over the next two weeks $80 is in play once it breaks through the 90 a close below 90 next week is done it will it will accelerate to the 80s and the 70s with no problem and by the end of the year this could easily be a fifty dollar stock all right just warnings for you if you're in the apple take heed this video has gone way over longer than i want it and i still have a bunch more i want to talk about i just don't have time right now so i'll tell you go to the blog uh, all the links to the blog is below and then follow me on Twitter uh, you'll get updates and things that I'm doing in the markets and seeing uh, I don't always have time to do a video but I do um, keep things uh, popping on the Twitter and on the website and of course ultimately if you want to follow along with the pulse waves then you want to come uh, to the chat room to the black ops chat room if you're interested Send me an email at uh, pulsecan72 at gmail.com. Links are below, and we can talk about it. Um, it is on a case-by-case -case basis. We keep it small. We keep it simple, and no nonsense allowed. So with that said, remember, bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered. Take what you can. Give nothing back, and everyone have a great weekend.